Okay, so we did ETO. So you can get that from a weather station or do a lot of math. So let's talk about the KC factor here. So now what we're doing is we have ETO, the reference value, and we're multiplying it by something that's related to our crop. And I just wanna point out here that this KC factor is, is really only for a well-watered crop under optimal agronomic conditions. So like if you had an insect outbreak in your vineyard and it ate half your canopy, do you think that KC value would be the same than if you didn't have that insect outbreak? It would probably be a lot lower, right? Because now you've got half the leaves because they got eaten by some bug. Or if you've got, you know, if the whole canopy has powdery mildew all over it or something like that. Or if you haven't been watering it and the canopy is really small for whatever reason. Uh, all sorts of things can impact this. So for, for the time being, we're gonna assume that this is a well watered, everything is looking great in the canopy and it's progressing exactly under ideal conditions. And so this multiplied by ETO gives us the ETC. So how do we get the crop coefficient? So if you look at the development of a crop coefficient over the course of a season, it's a function of growing degree days. Plant growth is highly dependent on temperature. So when grapevines leaf out in the beginning of the season at bud break, degree days start to accumulate. And as you accumulate degree days, the vine starts to grow and the, the shoot starts to grow, more leaves, you sort of fill out the canopy. And then at some point you reach what we would call canopy closure where it's not really gonna grow uh, anymore. It's not gonna take up any more space. And so it has this kind of sigmoidal uh, relationship, uh, which is very common in biology. And so here's what it looks like for an eight foot row spacing. And as I said earlier, row spacing is really um, changes this. So the, the seasonal development over time is uh, the same, but the absolute value and sort of the slope uh, change based on row spacing. If you're on a six foot row spacing and you're in the Willamette Valley, for example, um, you know, you're going to be, your crop coefficient for that block or whatever is going to be a lot higher and develop in a little different way than if you're on a nine foot row spacing and the ultimate amount of water given the same every other condition that you would have to apply, the ultimate amount of water would be higher because you have more rows per unit land area. And so these curves have equations and here's an equation for you that you can use. This is for VSP trellises, a very common trellis system uh, that's used all over the world this is what it is. This E is just the, the exponent 2.71, whatever. Um, the only thing that you need to input is this KC max value, which is the maximum crop coefficient determined by your row spacing. And whatever the total accumulation in degree days in Fahrenheit units. I did that because uh, I always go back and forth between Fahrenheit and Celsius, but I think in practice, a lot of us use Fahrenheit. So, um, so whatever the value is, if you're a thousand heat units from bud break, you put that number in here and run the equation and whatever your row spacing is, and you'll get a KC. Now, this so, may work all right. And was you this can, was that this, was this from so that was this from Larry Williams's work? That's right. So this is the, and these equations were uh, from Larry Williams' work. This was done on Chardonnay grown in Carneros, which is at the southern end of the Napa Valley. Um, and um, he, he built this curve using actually measuring water withdrawals using a bunch of very intensive soil moisture measurements, but also measuring uh, shaded area, which I'll talk to you, and they lined up pretty well. Uh, and then so he drew a curve and published it and said, here's a curve for VSP trellis. But uh, before, I, before I go back to that, I want to point out that trellising system also matters. So Here's an estimated crop coefficient over the course of time. And you can see here's VSP here, really low, because the VSP trellis does what? It sort of puts all the shoots up into a little thin curtain, a little hedge. And when the sun is directly overhead at solar noon, when water use is at its highest, how much light is being intercepted by that tiny little hedgerow? 
certainly not nearly as much as some of these other kind of like lyre or sprawl type canopies that do a much better job or these trellises, excuse me, that do a much better job of, of, um, of displaying the leaf area uh, of the vine. And in doing so, that leaf area intercepts more sunlight and the crop coefficient is a lot higher. So, so just keep, keep that in mind. Yeah. So it's kind of like if you had a, a solar panel and if I had that solar panel placed vertically, like, yeah, it's going to get some light. But if I place it like horizontal to the ground, which is how we normally have a panel, like then we'd be, we'd be intercepting more light. Right. Absolutely. So which which canopy, which grapevine canopy do you think intercepts more light? This kind of sprawling canopy here on the left or this VSP canopy here on the right? Right. I'm going to go with you the left. See, yeah, the one on the left. I mean, this is like a, it's like a little tree, right? This guy's got to find the fruit in there somewhere. So going back to that curve, this is Larry Williams on Chardonnay, grown in Carneros, drew this curve. And so when I started doing experiments, I was like, ah, oh, everyone's on VSP. I'm going to use this curve. I'm going to water the grapevines. And, uh, and then I'm going to see, and I'm just going to measure uh, the crop coefficient uh, in a way that I'll, I'll, I'll tell you how to do it in a second and see how, how good it is. Well, when we did that, this is what we found. That when we actually made measurements, um, when we actually made measurements, this is what our crop coefficient development looked like. It increased a lot more rapidly early in the season, but then it actually ended up maxing out to the same value. So he wasn't wrong in terms of the maximum value, but what we saw was that the seasonal development was different in Southern Oregon than it was in ostensibly the Bay Area of California. And, you know, we, we felt pretty confident that these data were collected, you know, the vines weren't stressed for water. There wasn't any other like weirdness going on that would have affected canopy growth. In fact, they were uh, very green and growing very lushly. So, so we felt pretty good about it. So then the question is, what if you're in, uh, in central Otago, New Zealand, Russ, what do you do? How do you get your own crop coefficient? Well, and so there's yeah. a really easy way to do that. What's that? Yeah, this is exactly. This is the discussion Alec and I were having, uh, yesterday when I tried to figure this out using, there's uh, some very good, I'll post it up on our course website. There's a very good article from Larry uh, from, it was a practical vineyard in... Yeah, 2001. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's, it's what many of us have used to guide how we do this. And uh, yeah, so I, I went about doing this, like the shaded area under vine using a uh, digital camera technique. Um, but it was, yeah, the whole thing, it's, it's very, it's very if, you, um, if you don't have Alec with you, you have to troubleshoot it yourself. It's very hard. So I'm excited for this. Okay. So, um, so after I saw this relationship between what we found and what, you know, the literature says, you know, we'll go back to this quote from George Box, all models are wrong. Some are useful. And I really just want to point it out that like, remember I talked about nuance and irrigation management and, you know, there's all these like fudge factors and like, this is a fudge factor where it's like, you know, the curve that we use, the crop coefficient curve, worked pretty well. You know, the vines weren't really that stressed for water and, and the vines grew well, but it certainly wasn't representative of the vines that we were growing. So if you want to make your own, it's very easy to do so. You basically need to quantify how much shade is below the vines at midday at solar noon. Uh, this was shown to be a very strong linear function of water use. So if you measure this if you quantify this area of shade, it is like a straight arrow line with daily water use. And so the old school way of doing it that Russ was trying to do is you take, you know, you put something out there and then you take a picture with a camera and then you download the picture and then you change the pixels and you count the pixels of shade and not shade. Very, uh, a lot of work. Um, and not super, way to do it. Not, super not super accurate either. Like no, I, there's a lot of things. Yeah, there's a lot of things that can change that. So, so before I get into how you would do it in practice, the the the, the, the equation is this: is that PSA stands for percent shaded area 
times 0 0.017. And this is just the slope of that line that relates shaded area to um, water use. So percent shaded area times this number uh, will give you the crop coefficient. And remember that the PSA, the percent shaded area, is the total area of shade per vine, so the area of the shade, divided by the total land area per vine, multiplied by 100. So if you measure the shade is two feet wide and the plants are four feet apart, um, that's the top number, total area of shade. Bottom number is the land area. So if you're like in an eight by four vineyard, eight feet in between rows, four feet in between vines, times 100, times 0 0.017, and you get to a KC value of 0.43. Now, how can you do this without going through all of that business with the camera and the pixels and the making sure the height is the same and, and you got a million other things to do? Um, uh, Mark Batney, who's an extension uh, a viticulture guy in, in uh, Central Coast, California, really bright guy and really good with uh with like gizmos and little quick little technological tools that can help figure it out that well instead of doing all that business you can just use a solar panel and you can the theory is that the solar panel intercepts some amount of light and the amount of light that it doesn't intercept that's shaded out by the vines is the shaded area and so you just make a relationship between what the solar panel uh, intercepts when it's fully sunlit versus how much it's intercepting in the under the canopy. And then you do a little bit of math and that's your shaded area, boom, you're done. And I've included the link here um, that talks about how to build one and how to use it. And it's very, very helpful. And we use these all the time. No, no counting pixels anymore, it's way faster. Now, if you really want to be fast and loose with it, you can just show up with a tape measure and just measure how wide the shade is of the canopy. But of course, then you're losing a lot of the nuance and the, you know, if the canopy is very porous, yeah. um, you know, then you're going to overestimate how much shade and you'll probably put too much water on. And that, that was a huge issue for me in Otago because we're dealing with, there you're dealing with a climate, it's a desert uh, and it's like about 11 inches of rain annually so you already have a pretty porous canopy so yeah or like what about your pruning system you know if you have more dense shoots and like a spur pruning system versus a cane pruning system you know you might not have as dense of a canopy certainly earlier in the year if you're in a situation where you need to irrigate at that time um you know just going out there with a tape measure you know yeah you'll get a number but you know you're going to get a very bad number. So the question is kind of like for your practice, how, how detailed do you want to be? How precise do you want to be? I think the Paso panel, you can build them for 400 bucks, 500 bucks, and you get a lot of use out of them. It's all kind of hardware store materials, except for the solar panel. And they're very, very useful. And, um, and, and uh, you get a really nice number, a really good number. And then if I, um, if I, if I do that, if I build my Paso panel, would you recommend, like, collect the, do, do your KCs for, like, a two or three years and then make, a, make your own curve against growing degree days and then you have your own formula for your system? Absolutely. I mean, remember that, you know, you got your grapevines as a permanent crop in a block and the, it's going to be variable. We all know that. Um, there's going to be some weak spots. There's going to be some strong spots. But if you if you're irrigating just based on one valve for that block, you're ultimately going to be turning it on or turning it off for some amount of time. And so, what you're going to want to do is maybe make your own canned equations. You go out there, collect KCs over the course of uh, time, two three years. You build your own curve, and then you never have to do it again because that soil is not variable in time. It's variable in space. And that's a different issue, but it's not variable in time. The weak spots are typically always going to be weak, and the strong spots are typically always going to be strong. You can try and mitigate that to some degree, but ultimately that's the case. And so once you build your own curve, then you can retire the Paso panel or whatever uh, and use it when you're maybe developing new blocks. So when you put it all together, you've got ETC equals ETO times KC. 
We've got some ETO value that we got from the weather station, 1.28 inches. We've got our KC value, 0.43. You multiply them together and you learn that the last, last week, the vine used just over half an inch uh, of water. The vineyard used just over half an inch of water. Now, because drip systems and the way that most people uh, think about drip irrigation in, in vineyards uh, is typically on a gallons basis, not on a, uh, you know, gallons per unit time, gallons per hour, not on a inches per hour. Uh, if you want to convert to gallons, you're sort of in the world of the imperial measurement system. So you need a conversion factor here because uh, nothing is straightforward. Um, 0.55 inches per uh, over the last week. You have to multiply that inches by the land area of the vine. It's eight by four, so 32 square feet and this conversion factor. And you end up with 11 gallons per vine that you need to replace because that's what the vines used uh, last week. Now, just as a uh, shameless plug for the metric system here, if this was millimeters, uh, one millimeter over one meter squared is one liter. Yeah, so, this is what so I've been that's saying. What, yeah, that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying, I'm not saying metric is better. I'm just saying that one times one equals one. So, <laughs> so now we did it. So now we have a value. How much do we put on? 